facing a time of crises right now? Are you in a situation where you just don't know what to do? I want to encourage you to watch this broadcast today. Hello, dear friends. My name is Pastor Tim Gibb. This is Revival Word Ministries. I will take you into the Word of God, and I want to show you what to do when you don't know what to do. This is going to be a great broadcast. Join us for this time in God's Word. Psalm 55, and we're going to read the Psalm of David. David is expressing his heart to the Lord, and he's overwhelmed. What's going on is that the enemy is pursuing him. The enemy wants to come and take his life. David is having all kinds of problems. You ever been in a situation you have all kinds of problems? Maybe some who are watching today, you're watching and say, I'm feeling overwhelmed with the problems of my life. And David prays this prayer, and let's read in Psalm 55. He says, give ear to me, or give ear to my prayer, O God, and do not hide yourself from my supplication. Attend to me and hear me. I am restless in my complaint and moan noisily. Because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they bring down trouble upon me, and in wrath they hate me. Now notice again, he says, because of the voice of the enemy and the oppression of the wicked, they bring down trouble upon me. You ever been in a place you feel like trouble is just being brought down upon you? Maybe it's because of some of the poor decisions you've made, or maybe because of the decisions of others, or the actions of others, or you literally have some people that are enemies, and of course, we have an enemy called the, the devil, Satan. Peter said in his epistle, that the devil's like a roaring lion going about seeking whom he may devour. And so every one of us, we, we deal with problems. Jesus said, in this world, you will have troubles. And David's experiencing some overwhelming troubles. He's being pursued by an enemy that wants to destroy him. And then he says in verse 4, My heart is severely pained within me, and the terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling have come upon me, and horror has overwhelmed me. Wow. <laughs> How many know these are strong words that David is speaking? He says, horror has overwhelmed me. Fearfulness. David is in fear. And so much so, he says, I'm trembling. I'm trembling in fear because of the pursuit of the enemy, because of the problems that David is facing and this trouble that he's in. He's overwhelmed with fear. A spirit of fear has taken over his life. He's, he's trembling in fear. Horror has overwhelmed me. And then he says this prayer in verse 6. And I think it's a prayer that we've all prayed at one time or another. He says this. Oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then I would fly away and be at rest. Indeed, I would wander far off and remain in the wilderness I would hasten my escape. Oh, let's be honest in this room today, and you're watching on TV. How many at one time or another just said, oh, if I could just escape my problems. Oh, if I could just leave these troubles behind. Maybe you even said it like David. Oh, that I had wings like a bird. <laughs> or maybe you put this like, I could just get on an airplane and go somewhere. Amen. I would escape. I would run from my problems. I would flee. I would go somewhere where I could find rest. But here's the reality, friends. So often, wherever you go, the problems follow you. And David is being honest. I love the Psalms for this reason. He's being honest. He's saying, oh God, I'm overwhelmed. I want to talk to some people here today, and you're feeling overwhelmed with life circumstances. And maybe right now you're saying, oh, if I could just escape my problems. I want to talk to you for a few moments this morning about what to do when you don't know what to do. What to do when your heart feels overwhelmed. What do you do when life just seems so complicated and the pressures of life are, 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 are piling up on you and, and uh, you feel like you just can't go on and all you want to do is escape. What do you do in times like these? Well, let's turn over now to an Old Testament story in the book of Second Chronicles chapter 20, because there's another man that was facing another set of troubling circumstances. 
His name was Jehoshaphat. He was the king of Judah. And it says in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1, that it happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others, and besides them the Ammonites, came to battle against Jehoshaphat. And some came and said to Jehoshaphat, a great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria, and they are in Hazon Tamar, which is in Gedi. So here's this king of Judah. All of a sudden he gets reports. Three enemy nations are coming against him to destroy him and his people Judah. Talk about a difficult day. Talk about a problem. And it was no small thing because the very next verse, verse 3 says, Jehoshaphat feared. So this was no big deal. This was, this was a big deal because he gets word, three nations are coming against you to destroy you. And Jehoshaphat didn't say, oh, no problem, we can take care of it. No, Jehoshaphat got into fear. I'm pretty sure that Jehoshaphat was saying, like David, Fear has overwhelmed me. Amen. I'm trembling in fear. Horror has overwhelmed me. I'm sure Jehoshaphat said, like David of old said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove. I could fly away and be at peace. If I could just escape this problem. Come on, be honest. How many of you have said it? You said it one time. If I could just escape, if I could just leave this situation, if I could just leave my troubles behind. But how many know you can't do that? You've got to face it. So what do you do when you don't know what to do? What do you do when trouble comes and problems come and, and horror comes and there's an enemy that's pursuing you? What do you do when all of a sudden fear wants to grip your heart? You do what Jehoshaphat did. It says in verse 3, Jehoshaphat feared, but he set himself to seek the Lord and he proclaimed a fast throughout all Judea. What did Jehoshaphat do? Amen. He was turning his fear and he was turning it and giving to God. He was going to seek God. You can remain in that place of fear and torment and oppression or friends, you can make the choice that when life is coming against you and enemies are coming against you and you're feeling overwhelmed and it looks like certain disaster or certain death, you can make the choice to dwell in that fear and remain in that fear or you can turn your heart to seek the Lord and to find his help and to find his blessing. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and there is safety. Hallelujah. We turn to the Lord. We turn to him. That's what I want to encourage you to do today. Now we're going to look at what Jehoshaphat did. It's not just that he turned to the Lord but we're going to look at how he prayed, what he did in his prayer, and the answer that came to him that will work for you as well. But I want you to notice a little formula that Jehoshaphat followed that Paul the Apostle wrote about in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Read this verse on the screen. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be anxious for nothing. Wow. Another version translation says, Don't worry about anything or don't get into fear. Now, how many know that's very easy to communicate, many times hard to live? For David, who was being pursued by an enemy, he was at the point of trembling with fear. Yet the word of the Lord would come to him and say, David, don't fear. Jehoshaphat, you're being surrounded by three enemy nations that plan to utterly destroy you. What's the word of the Lord? Don't fear. You're in a situation right now where there's troubles and the problems and in the natural, it's very, the tendency would be to fear. But the word of the Lord comes to you today. Don't be afraid. Fear not. And then it goes on to say, Philippians 4, 6, don't worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication. And I notice this, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And then it says this, and the peace of God. That word peace is the Hebrew, is the word shalom, amen. The peace of God will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. In other words, God's gonna, in his peace is also his provision. We're gonna see that. And so God has given us 
a threefold formula of how to deal with troubles and problems and fear when it wants to come against you and attach itself to you. The first thing is make a commitment not to fear about it. Now, that's not easy to do, but the way you do it is you turn from your fear and you turn to the Lord. You turn to the Lord in prayer. And this is what Jehoshaphat did. It said he feared, but he set himself to seek the Lord. And he gathered all Judah to come and to fast and to seek the Lord. Amen. But it's not just that you pray, but it's how you pray. How you pray. I've noticed some people in there praying. They're not praying themselves into faith and out of fear. In fact, they're just rehearsing all the problem and all they're doing is praying the fear. And they're just co complaining to God and, oh Lord. But Jehoshaphat prayed. Now, Jehoshaphat, in his prayer, we're going to read it. He prayed, but he did three things in his prayer. First of all, he prayed the greatness of God. Second of all, he prayed the covenant, the covenant that God had made with Abraham, the covenant with God, and then he prayed third of all the promises of God. Let's look at in Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 6. Jehoshaphat prays that, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? Do you not rule over all the kingdoms of all the nations? And in your hand is there not power and might so that no one is able to withstand you? What a prayer. Do you see the prayer that Jehoshaphat prayed? He didn't begin his prayer with like, God, look at all the problems. He wasn't magnifying his problem. Fear came that was magnifying his mind, his heart. But he turns to God in prayer and he begins to magnify God. He begins to declare the greatness of God. God, are you not the God of heaven? God, are you not the God, the great God that rules all the kingdoms of the nations? In your hand is there not power and might? You see what Jehoshaphat's doing? He's praying the prayer of faith. He's praying, building himself up. He's looking to the great God. He said, God, he's declaring the greatness of God. The second thing he does is he declares the covenant. Verse 7, are you not, are you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of this land and before your people and gave it to your descendants of Abraham, your friend, forever? Now, why is he referencing Abraham? Because years before, God made a covenant promise with Abram that Abram, I'm going to give this land to you and to your descendants. And here now, three enemy nations are coming to drive the people of God out of the land. And Abram was given a promise that his descendants would have that land. And so Jehoshaphat is saying, he says, God, you're great. And God, I bring you in remembrance of the covenant. I'm telling you, friends, this is how we're to pray in times of trouble. Amen. In times of trouble, we're to magnify the Lord. Amen. And, and extol his greatness. And we're to come and remind God of his covenant with us. And I want you to know today that through Jesus Christ, we have a covenant. Amen. It's even a stronger covenant than Jehoshaphat had. It's a covenant with God through Christ with great and precious promises. And then the third thing Jehoshaphat prays is he prays the promises of God. He says in verse uh, 9, If disaster comes upon us, such as sword, judgment, pestilence, or famine... We will stand before you in this temple and in your presence for your name is in this temple and cry out to you in our affliction and you will save, you will hear and save. See what he's saying? <laughs> he's saying, God, first thing he says, God, you're great. And Lord, we have a covenant with you and you've given us promises that if anything is gonna come against us, he says, you will hear and you will save. Oh, hallelujah. That gets me excited today, friends. Amen. I want you to know, friends, today, we serve a great God. We serve an awesome God. We serve an all-powerful God. We serve a mighty God. Amen. He's faithful to his covenant, and he keeps his promises. Hallelujah. And when you call on him, he will hear you, and he will save you. Then Jehoshaphat begins to tell God the situation. He says, now in verse 10, here we are. And here are the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whom you would not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they have turned from them and did not destroy them. But here they are now rewarding us by coming to throw us out of your possession. This is your possession, which you have given us to inherit. O oh God, will you not judge them? 
And then he says in verse 12, we have no power against this great multitude that's coming against us, nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are on you. I love that. He says, God, we don't know what to do. That's why I titled this message, What to Do When You Don't Know What to Do. What do you do when you don't know what to do? You get your eyes on the Lord. You take the Philippians 4, 6 promise. You take the Philippians 4, 6 directive. Don't worry about anything. Well, how am I not going to worry about it when trouble's coming everywhere? You turn to God in prayer. But not just in prayer, it's how you pray. you got to pray like Jehoshaphat. Amen. God, you are great. You are mighty. You are awesome. Lord, with you nothing is impossible. And Lord, I bring you in remembrance of your covenant and of your promises. And I thank you, Lord, that when I call on you, you will hear, you will answer, you will save. Hallelujah. And this is what Jehoshaphat did. He did it with prayer. And then here comes the word of the Lord. It says in verse 14, the spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jeel, the son of Mattaniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph. In other words, the Bible wants you to know who this man is. In the midst of the congregation, this is a prophet. And he said, listen, all of you, Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid. Hear the word of the Lord, do not be afraid. Hear the word of the Lord, do not be afraid, nor be dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but the Lord's. And then it says in verse 16, tomorrow go down against them. And then it says, verse 17, you'll not need to fight in this battle. Position yourself, stand still, and you will see the salvation of the Lord. And it goes on to say, and the Lord is with you. Hallelujah. Here comes the promise. You see, when you move in faith, you activate. Amen. You bring about the attention of God on your circumstance. And the word of the Lord comes. You're not going to have to fight this battle. What a foolish thing to fight the battle on your own when you can just rest in God and let God fight your battles for you. See, this is what the spirit of faith does. The spirit of fear is overcome and is as disabled and tries to work something out on their own, but the spirit of faith puts it in the hands of God. Peter said, Cast all your cares on him, all your troubles on him, all your worries on him. Why? Because he cares for you. And when you begin to declare the greatness of God, when you begin to declare the covenant of God, when you begin to declare the precious promises of God that have their yes and amen in Lord Jesus Christ, I promise you, friends, the word of the Lord will come to you and says, you don't have to fear. You don't have to be dismayed. You don't have to worry. Amen. God's going to fight this battle for you. And then the instruction comes. Now remember, it says in Philippians 4, 6 and 7, be anxious for nothing, don't worry about it. But in everything in prayer and supplication, not just that you pray, but how you pray. And notice he says, do it with thanksgiving. Well, then the instruction came, Jehoshaphat, you go against these three armies. But you're not going to put the army in front. You're going to put the praise team in front. You're going to put the worshipers in front. Now, in the natural, that's suicide. In the natural, that's disaster. Because when they'd worship the Lord, they'd lift up their hands. And when you lift up the hands, it's a universal sign of surrender. But the people of God were not surrendering to their enemy. They were surrendering to the greatness of God. They were surrendering to their God. They were acknowledging God. In fact, the Bible also says the lifting of the hands is a sign of covenant. They're saying, God, we're in covenant with you. And so here they are marching against three armies with their hands in the air. And they're saying, praise the Lord. He is good. His mercy endures forever. And all of a sudden... There was confusion in the camp of the enemy and they started destroying themselves. And they started to kill themselves, destroy themselves, and the enemy started to flee. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says you submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. How do you submit to God? You turn to him in prayer. And you declare his greatness. You declare his covenant. You declare his promises. You turn to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and, and the devil is going to flee from you. And the text goes on to say that they went in. Well, actually, it says, when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, the Lord sent confusion, and the enemy was defeated. Singing brings the presence of God. 
And then it says on the fourth day they went in and they collected all of the spoil, all of the jewels, all the jewelry, all of the finances. The enemy either killed themselves or they fled and they left it all behind. And great prosperity. You see, what the enemy meant for destruction, God turned it for their good. Oh, hallelujah. I want to say that again. What the enemy meant for destruction, the enemy came to destroy Jehoshaphat, to destroy Judah. And Judah and Jehoshaphat was in fear, but they made the right choice. They turned it to God. They did Philippians 4, 6. Don't worry about it, but pray about it with thanksgiving, with worship, declaring his greatness, his covenant, his promise, and God fought for them. <laughs> and they just went and collected what the enemy meant for their destruction. God turned it for their good. I'm speaking to you today, and maybe you're feeling overwhelmed with life situations. You're feeling overwhelmed with the problems, and it may look like absolute destruction and absolute death. It may look bad. But I tell you, if you follow this Philippians 4, 6 formula that Jehoshaphat followed, instead of getting into fear, get into faith and turn to God and begin to declare his greatness, his covenant, his promises, renew yourself in him, and you give it to him, and you just begin to thank him and to praise him, even in advance, you say, Lord, I praise you, I thank you for the victory that you have afforded to me. Amen. I want you to know today, God is going to turn what the enemy means for destruction. He is going to turn it for your good. Oh, praise God. I hope you got that revelation today in your mind and in your spirit and in your heart. Amen. What to do when you don't know what to do. You turn to the Lord. The natural thing is to get into worry, to get into fear, and to become under tremendous stress and pressure. But friends, there is an answer, and that is you turn that energy from a place of fear, and fear brings torment, and you bring it to the Lord. Peter says, cast your cares upon him because he cares for you, and begin to pray. But as we preached here today, it's not just that you pray, but how you pray. You can pray in fear. You can pray in defeat. It won't bring you any answer. But we learn from Jehoshaphat, you've got to pray in faith. Declare the greatness of God. The Bible says we're to enter into his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Amen. We declare his greatness. That means getting our eyes off of the problem and onto the solution which is the Lord. Amen. David said, you're the glory and the lifter of my head. Lift up your head. Look up. Declare his greatness. Declare his covenant. That's the word of God. And declare his promises. And I believe that as you do that, you're going to activate the presence of God in your life to bring about the answer. And you won't have to fight in this battle, but just stand still and see the salvation that the Lord will bring to you. Hallelujah. Praise God. I just want to pray for you as we end this broadcast today. And believe God for his touch upon your life right now. Father, I pray for each one that's watching this broadcast today. I pray that they will get rid of fear. And I pray that the gift of faith will be dropped into their heart. To believe you, Lord for your promises that you never leave us, you never forsake us. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith in you. And I thank you, Lord, that you're going to work mightily on their behalf. Hallelujah. I want to agree with you today in prayer. Just begin to thank God for the victory that's yours through Christ. Amen. I want you to know today that we care for you. We love you. This is Pastor Tim Gibb, Revival Word Ministries. You can learn more about our ministry at revivalword.com. We'll look for you at the same time next time. God bless you. I bless your name. I bless your name.